I bet that within 100 miles of you is a special collections archive that you have access to where you can go hold a 16th century book. If you consider that out of all the trades, out of all the manufacturing that took place in, uh, uh, before the mechanized period in the middle of the 19th century, it's probably it's books that are the most productive um, uh, business that has lasted. And so if you want to understand your culture, it's not only do you understand it through the text, but you understand it through the object, because you've got 500 years of objective study, which will allow you to learn uh, so much about the people um, and, uh, that made, made the, the book or the text or the manuscript, but also about the, the paper makers or about the, the book binders or about the type founders. All these things are, are what are drawing scholars to the text and that's why I think that the history of the book is such an important uh, in, uh, development in the academic world of the humanities. This is a 19th century binding and you can see the very beautiful gold tooling on this beautiful, beautiful red Morocco. Then as we open it up, we see these beautiful end papers. This is called marbling on these end papers and it was made by having a viscous liquid and then putting these colors of oil on top and then moving it a little bit and then the paper was put on that pattern and then used in binding these books. We're looking at a bunch of books here, but also we're kind of looking at a barnyard. We've got objects made out of plants and animals. Uh, we've got some sheep and goats here on this table. Uh, we've got a cornfield on this table. Uh, we've got a flax field on this table. I believe we've got a cow down here. And, and, and there are all these objects on this, on this table that are, well, they're all made out of, out of nature. Um, and what's fascinating to me, that, that this book here is from 1800. It's, it's printed on paper made from straw. And it was printed very purposely on paper made from straw because the, 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 the writer of the book made the paper, and his name is Matthias Koops, and he was trying to come up with another way to make paper that would be sustainable. Now, if we look at this more closely, we see this, this paper made out of straw. It's, it's not that beautiful. And, uh, we may say, well, of course our paper's not made out of straw today. Koops was wrong. Well, he was and he wasn't, because in the back of this book, he also prints an appendix, and this appendix is printed, it's the first paper printed, on wood pulp. He has this idea in addition to straw that, hey, maybe we could make paper out of wood pulp. And he was right about that. It's fascinating, this volume, because it's, it's sort of this, this mini history. It's, it's almost as though um, this wood pulp has a, a bit part right now, but we know it's going to be the hero of the story. But what I'm interested in with the natural history of the book is this question. What if Straw had been the hero of the story? Would polar ice caps look the same as they do today? We make decisions to use different natural resources to do what we want to do, whether it's to drive big cars or to print our ideas on paper. Right up until the uh, Really, if we think about it, in, in, in the United States, after the Civil War, books were still being made on paper made from recycled clothing. So if we think about uh, Gutenberg, 1450 to really roughly 1850, that's 400 years. And we're in the short side of the history of the book in which uh, books are made out of trees. We think about saving a tree, but, but there was a period, and it was happening right around 1800, where they realized this was not sustainable to keep making it from, from clothing. And so uh, this person's trying to get a patent. And he prints a book called uh, The Substances That Have Been Used to Convey Ideas. And I love that. We think about uh, a, a conveyance, something that conveys something, a, a truck or a boat. And he's talking about the substances that have been used to convey ideas. Cornfields, sheep, cows. Um, and 
I love to think not only about the history of the book and the history of ideas and, and, and how they're printed and, and how they're written out and how people interact and write in the margins. That's, that, that's really fascinating to me, but I think it's also very interesting and I'm going to say also important and, and responsible to think about the natural history of the book and uh, what sort of natural objects, plants and animals, have we used to convey our ideas. Um, I think it's something that we, we can really think through with The Tempest. Uh, we see in The Tempest somebody who loves books and won't go anywhere without his books. But these books also allow him to control nature. They're his, his magic books. And sure, they're, yeah, he may have had some secret formulas, but a lot of people had magic books in, in this period. Uh, they, were, they were books on land surveying that were teaching new ways of, of measuring the land. Um, there were books like this one by Richard Hacklett on new world exploration that told them what to expect and what they could find. The great minds of the past, the, the writers and the thinkers and the mathematicians and the historians and scientists, they, they've, they've all worked on lots of different kinds of problems, but they've also all grappled with a very similar problem which is once I figure out my idea, how do I make it into something that I can hold and that I can share with others?